In this video, we're going to talk about how the Elgato Stream Deck can hack your workflow as a music producer. So this thing, although mostly used for streaming, is much more than just a controller for streaming. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use it to make everything a little bit easier while you're producing music. Hey yo, it's Alex from My Music, and as always with this channel, it's my mission to help you, the artist, produce themselves by developing their mindset, expanding their creativity, and connecting to their music in a deeper way. And today we're talking about the Elgato Stream Deck, which as soon as I've gotten this tool, I've slowly but surely started using it within my day-to-day -day activities in music production and beyond. So this Elgato Stream Deck has become kind of the centerpiece of a lot of the operations that I do on my computer. So right now, you can see that I'm using it to control OBS. If I switch scenes, you can see that it changes uh, the layout in OBS. If I go over here to maybe my hands, you can see my overhead camera, go back here. And right now we are also recording, which is right here. And if I hit this little button here, you can actually switch what is called profiles for different button layouts. So this is the one that I'm setting up for Ableton, which I'll show you in a sec. And then this is my kind of home dashboard where I have all my most used apps and folders and websites and all of that fun stuff. And as you can see, I like the idea of hands-on control. I like buttons. I like having tactile control on things instead of always having to use the keyboard and the mouse. I'd much rather play with knobs and faders and hit buttons and play instruments when I'm coming up with ideas and producing music. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and use the Stream Deck to switch the scene in OBS to go to my screen layout with the camera in the corner. And I also have Ableton open as well as the Stream Deck app here with the interface. So as you can see right now, I have a profile for OBS. So these are all of the actions or buttons that I've set up for when I'm using OBS. And this layout is reflected on the front of the Stream Deck. And obviously this is lit up because we are recording. Pretty meta, right? The awesome thing about this is you can open this up and have many profiles. So if I switch to, let's say my default profile, I can have a layout of the apps that I use the most. In this case, I have OBS, Live, Chrome, a bunch of folders and websites that I go to super often and just something fun to use. So this Elgato Stream Deck is so much more than just streaming control. You can actually set it up as a MIDI controller. You can set it up to control all sorts of things in Ableton or your DAW of choice. You can set it up to control OBS or to launch applications that you use super often on your computer. It's really all in one workflow device. All right, so let's go ahead and show you how to set up something super simple like launching apps. And of course, before starting this, if you wanna follow along, you'll need a Stream Deck. There are multiple different versions. I think they just launched a new one, but I opted for this kind of 15 button layout. There's one that's 40 buttons, but with this, you can create folders and stuff and it's uh, less of big of a footprint. So I went for this one. Either way, you'll need a Stream Deck. And then once you have a Stream Deck, you can go ahead and install this app, which is the Stream Deck app, where you can then program all of this stuff that we're gonna do. And I'm gonna go ahead and go to my default profile, which is what I use for my day-to-day -day stuff and show you a little bit behind the scene. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just maybe delete this one and build it back up. So Chrome is something I'm always opening up whenever you wanna search something, you wanna to go to a website, whatever it is. Instead of going over here and launching the app, I just hit a button and it's instant, right? And those seconds that you save over time with everything, it adds up. So I'm gonna go ahead and just X this out, trash this, delete it, and I'm gonna rebuild it. So. When you install this app, you have all sorts of built-in kind of scripts or programming things that are built in, and you can go to system, okay? And there are websites, or you can open apps, you can enter text, you can do hotkeys, and we'll get into this stuff later. But for now, all we need is to open an app, right? Because Google Chrome is an app. So I'm simply gonna click and drag this onto whatever button you wanna program. And now it opens up. And now we're going to tell it what app we want to open. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit choose. And there we go, open. And you'll see it also loaded in this awesome little icon. And that's it. <laughs> okay, now if I hit this button, I already have a Chrome window open, but it opened up on my other screen. 
Okay, so it's easy and it opens instantly. If I were to, let's say, hit the Spotify button, which is the same exact thing, it's just launching an app. If I hit that, Spotify immediately opens, right? And really it's easy as that. Okay, you can just drag open and open any apps and set it up how you want. So just keep that in mind, the applications that you use over and over and over again, or the websites that you always go to, you can just program them to a profile in your stream deck and then hit one button and have it instantly open whenever you need it. All right, I'm gonna show you something really cool that I set up that's super important and actually relevant for music production. So I'm gonna go back to the screen and I'm going to go back to my main profile, default profile, and you can create what are called multi-actions, okay? So in this case, I'm going to, I've already programmed this. So if you wanna program something with a multi-action, which is basically programming multiple things to happen in a row, you can go to the Stream Deck drop down here, and there's going to be a multi-action button. So what I've done is I've dragged this onto this and I've programmed a couple actions. So once you have this um, on a button here, you can hit this little arrow and get to the actions that I've programmed. And what this does is I've programmed this button to start a backup to my backup hard drive with Time Machine. Okay, and that's super important as a music producer, as you're creating stuff that you want to save your work and back it up. If ever your computer crashes or something happens, you have a backup and having it on a button for the stream deck is super powerful because it helps you remember to back up your work regularly. Okay, so the way that I've programmed this is that the first thing was to open the application terminal in my computer. And then the second action, so after this first action happens, the second action in the sequence is to type in text to start a backup. So this is the programming language to start a backup on Mac. And then I hit this little check mark so that it hits enter after it enters that text. So if I go ahead and hit this button on my stream deck, you'll notice that it opens up terminal, it hits that language. And if I click up here, you'll see that it's preparing to do a backup to my backup hard drive. Super useful little thing. And that's just to show you as well, the power of multi actions. Okay, so you can program multiple steps in whatever you want the Stream Deck to do, which is super powerful. All right, so now I'm gonna move over to Ableton and keep in mind, I've just started setting this up. So I'm still working out what I wanted to do, but I can show you how to set up whatever you would like to in something like Ableton or whatever DAW you're using. And the process will be similar in either case. The one important thing that I include in all of my profiles is this switch profile button. Okay, and you can find it under the Stream Deck dropdown. And I've programmed it to be the center button. And whenever I press this button on the Stream Deck, it will move to the next profile that I have. Again, I have it in the middle for this profile, hit it again, and here's the Ableton profile that I've just started. And again, I've put that switch profile button right in the middle. And if I hit it again, we cycle back to the first one. And this just makes it so you can access all of your various profiles directly from your stream deck just by hitting that button. So I would encourage you to put one of those in all of your profiles. So if you click this little drop down here, you'll see all of the profiles you have currently. And you can create a new profile here or you can edit them from this menu. So if I hit this, it shows me all of my profiles. And one cool thing that you can do here is that for these various profiles, you can tell the Stream Deck to switch to a specific profile when an app is launched. So in the case of OBS, whenever I launch OBS, the Stream Deck will automatically switch to the OBS profile that I have programmed. Similarly with Ableton, whenever I launch live, it's gonna pop up that profile that I'm currently working on, but that I will complete. It will automatically pop it up anytime I launch live. So that is super cool. And then you can of course make a profile, your default profile. And I will do that over here for my main kind of home base. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and switch to the Ableton profile that I've been working on. And let's go ahead and program something that we might want to do. So I use EQ8 on like most of my stuff. Let's go ahead and use it for compressor. Okay, so what we have to do to do that is let's go to another multi-action button. So I'm gonna click and drag this multi-action beside EQ8. And now it pops up this little menu where we can add in new actions. So now I'm gonna to go to system 
open that up and we're going to go to hotkey okay so the first thing that we want to do is to tell ableton to open up the browser so it can start looking for the plugin that we want so in this case to open up the browser so i'm just going to write browser and if you hit this little menu here beside hotkey and you click it it's now listening to learn what hotkey we want so in this case it's command f okay that's the hotkey and what command f does in ableton is it opens up the browser okay so that's step one that we want in our sequence well the next sequence is i want to type compressor so i want that to be the second step in our program so i'm just going to take this cut it out go back to stream deck and I'm going to add in another step to the sequence. And now it's going to be text. So I'm gonna grab text and I'm gonna type in compressor and the text that I want the Stream Deck to enter once the browser is open is the word compressor. And that's the next step. So now for following along in Ableton, the first step, I'm just gonna close this browser the first step is to open the browser, command F. The second step is to type compressor. So then it's in the thing. The next step is the down arrow so that it actually selects the compressor from the browser. So I'm gonna go ahead and program that in. So the next step is again, a hotkey. Click and drag that over. I'm just gonna call it down. I'm gonna click this and I'm just gonna hit the down arrow. So that's the third step in our program. And then the next step is going to be to hit enter. Right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit hotkey. I'm gonna hit, call it enter, click to assign, enter. And then finally, once we have that, it's going to select the compressor. It's gonna hit enter. It's gonna load it on whatever track we have selected, but I also want it to close the browser. So if I'm not mistaken, I'm gonna go back here. I think it's option command B. Yes, to close down the browser. So I'm gonna enter that hotkey here close and again that is option command b on mac so basically we've programmed all of these messages to happen in a row to do the action that we want in ableton so it starts out by opening the browser then typing in the word compressor then hitting the down arrow then hitting the enter key and then doing the hot key to close the browser so now we have that kind of set up i'm going to go ahead and try it so i'm going to Exit out of here, go in Ableton. Let's say we want a compressor on our Alpha League. I'm just gonna hit this button. And just like that, in two seconds, there's a compressor loaded. Isn't that awesome? So I'm gonna have some fun programming the most used plugins and functions that have an Ableton. And keep in mind, you can create what are called folders. So if you go to Stream Deck and you can create a folder, which is similar to I guess switching profiles, but when you hit that folder button, it will open up a new kind of menu on the stream deck with a back arrow to go back to this profile. If you wanna have, let's say, a folder for all of your most used plugins and you wanna have more functions going on in Ableton. But for now, I just wanna show you how you can actually change this so that it looks a little bit more appealing. So I'm gonna actually call this compressor and I'm gonna make the text a little smaller so that we can see it there. Maybe put it in the middle and I might actually edit this because I'm OCD. I'm also going to do this in the middle, EQ8, compressor. And then if you want to change the image of your icon, you can hit this little down arrow. I'm going to set it from a file. So right here, looks like that, great. So I'm going to open that, boom, and just like that. We have a nice image behind our compressor control on the stream deck and we can continue to go on to kind of program anything we want inside Ableton and just saving you those momentary seconds of having to open up the browser, type something in, select the plugin, double click, all that stuff. You just hit a button and it happens instantly. Another really cool thing that you can do with the stream deck is use it as a MIDI controller. Okay, so what comes with the Stream Deck software is a MIDI control here, okay? And it has all of these different commands that you can put on a button that effectively turns the Stream Deck into a MIDI controller. But what you can also do is download extra scripts from 
the internet. So if you want to browse around for some more of these kind of drop down menus that have presets like Twitter, Twitch Studio, OBS, there's a ton of them on the Elgato Stream Deck store. So if you click that little button, it brings this up. And if you type in MIDI button, there's this awesome profile that you can download that was made by Tom Kelly, and it gives you a little bit more control than the built-in MIDI control in Elgato. So now at the bottom here with the MIDI button, we have MIDI Note, MIDI Note Toggle, MIDI CC, all these different program things, and you can easily key map this inside Ableton to do absolutely anything, and then you can use your Stream Deck as a MIDI controller. And hey, if you've been producing music for a while, but are kind of hitting some walls, or you're not really getting the results you want out of your home studio, I've created a super in-depth masterclass that goes over the three secrets on how to develop and master your creative process for you as an artist, as a musician, as a producer. And I've jam-packed it full of actionable insights that I've learned over my 10 plus year journey. So if you're interested in checking that out, you can check it out in the link below. I really think it'll be a massive help. So again, if you want to check that out in the link below. And that wraps it up for this video. I just want to share the amazing capabilities of the Stream Deck and let me know, do you have a Stream Deck at home in your home studio? Are you thinking about buying one? Do you think it would be useful for you to program not only your DAW and like some launching plugins and functions or using it as a mini controller, but also using it in your day-to-day -day activities on your computer, whether it be streaming, whether it be just for your running a business or whether it just be for like graphic design or other things that you do on your computer i'd love to know in the comments down below i would also love to know what you would like to see next on the channel so whether it's how to finish a mix or how to play guitar or how to record guitar how to play piano whatever it is i'm more than happy to make some content around the things that you guys want to see so i would love to hear it in the comments down below and i'd be happy to make a video about that and until the next video i'll see you in the next one